tomorrow I'm going to ruin his life. I have been with him for three years now. We plan on getting married when our lives settle down. I wanted to start a family with him. I loved him more than anyone else in this world. I've sacrificed so much for him, moved away from my home, turned down jobs so I could stay with him, and stood by his side as he started to go back to school. I gave him my world and he cheats on me. I found out over a month ago. The scumbag got cocky and I found out that he was cheating on me with two different women. One is a TA at his university. The other is his best friend's girlfriend. I am livid. I write this post choking back venom. I loved him so much. He was my world, but now he will be the world I burned to nothing but ash. I've paid for everything since he quit his job last year to go to school. I was more than happy to help him. I make enough to support us both. The only upside is that the student loans are in his name with no connection to me. It will hurt to push the scumbag out to sea, but I will survive. I have held out for a month, enough time to create what I call the day his world burns. Tomorrow we are hosting a party. I arranged for his family to come, but my family will sadly not be able to make it. I have packed everything valuable already and the suitcases in the back of my car. My brother will come during the event tomorrow to take the car that is in my name that the dirtbag drive to my parents' house. The joint account, which is all my money anyways, is already empty. The event will be great and he thinks it's for us to announce our engagement to his family. What will happen in reality is I will announce my departure from his life. I have already taken a job out of state and have lined up a new place to live. I will start by telling everyone what he is into. The screenshots of him asking his friend's girlfriend to piss on him and many other fantasies his degenerate mind came up with will be passed around. I will hand him the notice to vacate as I have already broken our lease. We will need to be out by the end of the month. I will then end off by informing him that I have already reported he was sleeping with the TA from one of his classes the previous semester to the university and that I am sad I won't see the fallout from that. His friend also has a message for him that I will deliver informing him that his friend group will never want to see him again as well. And with that, I will leave. I will not look back. I will set his life on fire and walk away. Yesterday, I planned to ruin his life in front of his entire family. I worked for a month to create the scenario that would cut him the deepest. I had patiently waited for the chance to storm out of his world in a blaze of glory. And then I hit the front page of Reddit. I realized I had messed up when he was not answering my texts and had not shown up after hours he told me he would be home. I had hoped it was a happy accident, literally a car killing him before I had the chance. But no, I don't know how many men in the world are currently cheating on their soon-to-be fiancé with their best friend's girlfriend and a TA. However, the one who mattered in my plan found my Reddit post. I called his mother and found out that he had run home to his parents. He told them that we had a fight and that we were probably through. I was and still livid at myself. His mother asked me what had happened as he left out a few details. So I decided to tell her that he was cheating on me with a TA and his friend's girlfriend. I soon heard shouting before she hung up. I texted my ex that he had until morning to return my car before I reported it stolen and sent the screen shots of all his texts to his parents and siblings. My car was sitting in my driveway when I woke up. I contemplated setting the screenshots anyway, but his mother sent me a heartfelt text yesterday apologizing for her son's actions and I feel they deserve to be spared from their son's degenerate actions. My father and I will be moving all of my stuff today and I won't be coming back after that. I know you'll be reading this, you cheating fuck. You're a cowardly piece of shit. Just know I am not above sending out all of the screenshots if you ever dare to come back into my life. Oh, and all of your ex-friends know about your piss fetish. I can't control what they do with that information, so good luck with that. So I've been messing with this guy on and off for four years. And in this four years, I've been around a lot of his friends. And a lot of his friends have tried to talk to me. And I'm not saying that me and this man are like super serious because we're not, but like it's like an on and off thing, like I said. So it's like I see him when I see him and it's all love, right? So during quarantine, I stayed with him for like a two week period. Like I was with him for a minute and like his friends had definitely seen me around because obviously I was there for him. Um, and like I said, we weren't like super serious or anything, but like also... I fuck with him. So I've recently been seeing him a lot more in these last like, you know, in this last year and a half, I've been seeing him a lot more. So I have been running into his friends again. So his friend, I guess, was tired of trying to chase me and tired of hearing no. So he offered me a large sum of money or whatever I wanted. And I said, no, I'm not interested. So this man was literally flabbergasted that I said no. And he was like, well, anything you want, just name it, like anything, I'll give you whatever. And I'm like, no, like I, you know, I talked to your friend and I'm not interested in messing around with you. And he's like, am I ugly? Like he just didn't get the picture. He was just like, I don't understand. 
So he kind of leaves it alone. I see him out and about again. And he then approaches me again. Like, I can't believe it. I don't understand. Like, what, what kind of dumb girl are you to not fuck with me if I'm offering you whatever you want? And I'm like, so because I'm not taking your advances, you think I'm a dumb girl. Like, no, I just actually, you can't buy me. That's what it is. And I just respectfully told you that I mess with your friend. So I then see this man again, and he has the literal same dialogue with me, but this time there's multiple people around. And there's a girl that I'm with and I fuck with her, but like she doesn't need to know my personal business. So he gets irritated and I tell him, don't say this in front of other people. Like this is my business. And he's like, it's my business too. And gets mad again. So I recently run into him this weekend because it was the guy's birthday that I was talking to. It was his birthday this weekend. So he had a couple little things and I was out and about and I saw him sitting down and he got up, he stood up and he wasn't sitting in the chair for a while. And my feet had hurt because I was in heels. So I go to sit down and he was like, nah, get the fuck up. So I'm like, why are you talking to me like that? Like, you don't have to talk to me like that. You weren't using the chair. Well, you can ask, you have to ask. So he's like, no, like get the fuck up. Like you can ask, like you don't just sit down. I'm like, um, first of all, you don't own this place that we're in. And second of all, you're not even using it. And I'm in heels. He's like, I don't give a fuck about all that. Stand the fuck up. I'm like, <laughs> okay, bro. Like you're mad because I don't want to sleep with you. And you're literally trying to pay me to sleep with you and do whatever but you literally asked me to name my price or name whatever I want and you're gonna get it from me. So now that I said no, you wanna be an asshole to me. And I usually wouldn't say anything, but at this point it's getting out of hand because he's being extremely disrespectful for no freaking reason. Um, so it's like, I'm torn. Like, do I tell the guy that I've been messing with? Because obviously like, I know we're not serious, but like, you know, we've been fucking around for long enough. And the friend literally always makes sure that he does this shit in private. Like, it's never around him. So it's like, obviously, if he thought we were serious, he wouldn't be trying me like that. Or maybe he would. I don't know. Anyways, I'm like, at this point, do I just tell the guy that I'm messing with about what is going on with this man? Because he's starting to get extremely disrespectful, like I said. And I just don't fuck with it. And I'm a very nice person. Like, I don't deserve to be treated like that. And it's like over ass. Like, it's literally over ass. And I just feel like, I don't know if I should keep it to myself and just keep dealing with it because I don't want to deal with it. And I know at some point I'm just going to end up spazzing. And I really don't want to do that. So I just am torn. Like, I'm really stuck on what to do because like, I, it's just too much. It's, it's really just too much for no reason. I've just never had a guy speak to me like this. And I've been in the industry for a very long time. Like, and just, I don't understand why a man just can't take the word no and just be okay with the word no. But it's like, I don't want it to backfire on me. And like, I say something and then it causes an issue. And then now every time I'm around him, it just gets worse. Like, so I just, I don't know what to do. What do you guys think? I'm just curious, like I know there's gonna be a lot of hating ass comments and stuff, but I just don't understand why men act like this. It's not all men, because I know you guys are gonna come for me. Side note, I'm really trying to find my new lip combo and I'm actually like really, really liking this one. I did all MAC and then I just used my Kosas lip oil, which I really love. But back to what I was saying, um, the guy that I've been dealing with for four years wants me to come see him and he wants me to come see him in the next couple days and I know I'm going to be a random friend so it's like I don't <laughs> know what the best thing is to do. Am I wrong for requesting that my brother give me $20,000 to help me pay for my wedding since he makes a lot more money than me? I, 23 female, am engaged to my fiance, 27 male. I am also the mother to my daughter, 4. I wasn't able to go to university full time since I was raising my daughter. However, I am currently studying history online where I will hopefully be able to become a history teacher. Balancing studying while raising my daughter hasn't been easy. However, having my fiance supporting the family has really helped since my fiance works in a research lab. We have enough money to live comfortably, but Saving up money to have our dream wedding would take years. My brother, 28 male, works as a hospital doctor. 
His wife also works as a hospital doctor, so to say they are well off would be an understatement. My brother hasn't had the same struggles of raising a child since they both don't want any children. I don't mind the fact that they both don't have any kids, but they have been able to save a lot of money due to this. Recently, I asked my brother if he would be able to help pay for my wedding, since having him contribute to my wedding would help make it a magical moment for me. My brother offered to give me $5,000 towards my wedding, which honestly surprised me. I might be wrong here, but surely as a hospital doctor, my brother should be able to contribute more to my wedding. I told him that I'd really appreciate it if he could give me $20,000 for my wedding, since it would really mean a lot but he refused i'd be lying if i said i didn't make my annoyance with my brother clear and i told him that his refusal to help pay for my wedding is selfish and that if he doesn't help contribute to my wedding then he won't be able to come since it isn't my fault that i don't have a lot of money to fund my wedding we had an argument afterwards and i haven't been returning his call since the rest of my family is helping to contribute to my wedding which makes his refusal even worse despite my brother's actions my father thinks that i'm being way too harsh on my brother and that me not inviting him to my wedding would be upsetting for him Am I missing something here? Am I the asshole? I just found out that I've been dating my biological brother for six years. No. I am 30 and my brother is 32. I'm going to call him my boyfriend for the majority no, of the time. No, absolutely not. While I type this. <laughs> I feel weird about this. I was adopted as Fair. a baby, but I didn't know that I was adopted until I was in high school. I don't feel betrayed or care much. I love my parents and my parents love me. Who cares if they aren't my real parents? My boyfriend was also adopted. And when we met, it was one of the first things we sort of bonded over. We both didn't learn we were adopted until later on, and we both were lucky and had good families. We weren't passed around from foster home to foster home. Our relationship was and still is great. We understood each other very fast. We were attracted to each other quickly. I've never met someone and felt immediate attraction and familiarity. Now, I know that that comfort and familiarity is because he's my brother. <sighs> Not my half-brother, my full brother. We've done everything a couple that has been together for six years could do. Please. We said we love each other, we've had sex. We've celebrated anniversaries, we've met each other's families. I'm just glad we both agreed early on that we don't want to have kids. So that has never happened. I don't want to deal with the health risks to raise a child and them know that their parents are siblings. I discovered it when we did a DNA test thing to see our ancestry and <laughs> what exactly we are. I ordered two for us. We spit in the tube and sent it out. Just cute couple things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It took like a month for the results to come back and I was excited to see what we were, but before I could even get to that, I saw that we were siblings. I was shocked, to say the least. I only just found out this information and I haven't told my boyfriend. I'm really <laughs> hoping they made a mistake, but things are kind of starting to make sense to me now. We always get the, quote, you guys look so alike, or, quote, he's the male version of you. No! Oh my God. <laughs> So bad. Long no. before this test, we've always gotten compared. We always just laughed it off, but I have spent the morning looking at pictures of us together and realizing what we really are. We do look so alike. It's freaking me out, and I don't know what I should do. I still love my boyfriend slash brother. <laughs> and Ew. we have been together for six years. We have a house together and a whole comfortable life. I'm hoping that this test is wrong, and we will do a real test soon but I'm panicking. I still see him as the love of my life. Am I the asshole for wanting to serve my ex papers for full custody and child support for my daughter now that he has a new baby? I, 31 female, have a wonderful seven-year-old daughter that I would go to the moon and back for and have been supporting her as a single parent. My ex, 31 male, hasn't really been in her life since we split when she was two and a half. He hasn't paid child support for at least four years and has sporadically visited her at his parents' home when she visits. He says he will visit her while hyping her up and then not show up only to give us a BS excuse on why he never showed up leaving her devastated and upset that he didn't spend time with her. He has blamed me for everything under the sun, which I can prove to not be true. For example, he blames me for not calling him so he can video chat with her on my days off when he doesn't even attempt to try in the first place on his days off. He even stated that he couldn't pay child support because he was rebuilding his car. My ex had seen multiple girls in the past four years, but has been seeing his current girlfriend for about a year at this point, and she has a three-year-old daughter. He shunted our daughter to be his girlfriend's daughter's father doing father-daughter activities, like going to the pumpkin patch, holidays, and spending time with the three-year-old. He forgot his own daughter's birthday for two years in a row and possibly for a third time this year. 
His family and I heard a rumor that his girlfriend was pregnant three to four months ago. His parents wanted to be in the baby's life and I was excited that my daughter would have a half sibling since I don't want more kids. He vehemently denied that she was pregnant and we left the subject alone. Well, about 10 minutes before I started my shift, I was told and shown that my ex's girlfriend had their baby girl that morning. I was livid. He had lied to all of us that the baby was coming and severed whatever trust with him we had left. I started looking at family attorneys in my city because I know this will get messy. He wants parental rights without having to lift a finger or pay child support. I want full custody since our daughter lives with me full time. Before people ask, no, he's not in our daughter's life unless he wants others to see he's being a good dad. The last time he visited her, she didn't even recognize him at all. Yes, I have filed for child support several times in the past only for them to die in court because he didn't want to sign the paperwork. I'm at my wits end with him. I've been to a couple of close friends and close co-workers about this and the majority are saying that I'm the asshole because I should be excited for the new baby and that with the new baby, he won't have the funds for child support. Am I the asshole for crying to my husband? My 18-year-old son, Eric, just graduated from high school. I'm very proud of him because he has ADHD and school has always been a struggle for him, but he's going to college and his future is promising. I was out with two of my girlfriends and both have children the same age as Eric. Well, I excused myself to the washroom and right before I was about to go back into the room, I overheard one of them saying that I must be disappointed in Eric. Disappointed because he's not studying law or medicine, etc. like their kids. This caught my attention and I kept listening. They continued to talk about how he barely graduated and then they made a few odd jokes about how Eric's probably going to follow in my footsteps and marry a rich older lady. They talked about my son's reputation and laughed about how he clearly cares more about his face and his future, just like his mother. This hurt me a lot. I was heartbroken. Not only were they insulting me, but my son as well. I walked into the room and they went silent, but acted as if they weren't just shit talking. I didn't mention it and simply decided to never hang out with them ever again. But when I got home, my husband asked me if anything was wrong and I just began to cry and told him everything. I've been friends with him for a year and gosh, I don't even know. He was really angry. He had invited them and their families to go on a quick two-day trip and he called their husbands and canceled. When they asked why, he told them there was no way in hell he was going to pay for two bitter mean girls that insult his wife and son on vacation. Well, I got a call from the two and they were really upset. They said I need to tell him to rethink his decision and that they were just joking around because their kids were really looking forward to the trip. I told them that I didn't want to, but they said that I should have talked to them instead of crying to my husband like a weak ass bitch. I told them to fuck off and they replied with, this is exactly why we hate you. Wait, sorry, are you going to go cry to your husband again? That stung a little and now I'm wondering, am I the asshole for not being straight up and crying to my husband instead? The two think I am and my sister agrees that I should have dealt with it myself and I went too far telling my husband.